Social conditions were quite different then than they are now at Oakwood College. Uh, less contact, friendliness, the platonic relationships. Our teacher used to say, when you reach upper class level, you ought to begin praying and thinking about a wife. His point was, it's not just the romantic interests that needs to be taken care of, but you go out into ministry as a team, and you've got to be sure that you go out with the right one. As a matter of fact, he said in class one day that he knew a minister, a very talented man, but he said he will never reach his potential because of the woman he married. Well, that registered with us young men. I know how to love, and, and I wanted someone I could truly love, but I also knew the importance of my work, and I wanted God to be a part of this. I wanted him to give me a wife. There were many, many delightful young ladies, but would you believe many of them were also daughters of ministers? And something in their experience had turned them against being the wife of a minister. I don't know. I didn't question. I don't understand. I just decided to wait and to let the Lord lead. And one day, a young lady had twins, and one was crying in church. These twins are now past 50. <laughs> One is a doctor and the other is a medical whatever. Uh, one's a girl, one was a boy. And the girl twin was crying and could not be consoled. And a young lady named Miss Walterine Wagner, aunt to these two, just picked up the little girl and brought her out into the lobby of the college church to try to help her. She knelt down beside her and was speaking comfortably to her. I was a college usher, and my last responsibility was make sure the lobby was clear and then to walk into service. Just before I was to do that, this took place, and the little one was just weeping uncontrollably. So I walked over and just scooped her up in my arms and said, let me try. I stepped outside into the sunlight, and in just moments, she was fast asleep on my shoulder. So I came back in to where her aunt was waiting, and I said, what shall we do with her? Shall we take her home and put her into bed? We settled on that rather courageous idea, and we walked slowly to the home. She had a key, opened her brother's door, and I laid that little child in her bed. I think we shook hands, <laughs> but I walked out of there and when the front door shut behind me and I was crossing the porch of that apartment building, that same powerful impression came that I received when I was called to the ministry and said, that's the one, Charles. That's the one that I have chosen for you. I thought, what? She certainly was a very fine-looking lady, and as far as I knew, a very a lady of very fine character. And then something else clicked. I went to early morning prayer meeting on Sabbath, along with hundreds of other young people. It was the only service on campus that you weren't required to attend. It was all voluntary. And in the wintertime, it was dark when you went, 6.30 in the morning. But I noticed that this young lady was in that voluntary prayer meeting. I remember walking out of it and saying to myself, when the time comes to choose, I'd better look at this group. So as I'm walking home from putting the little girl to bed, that came back to me. She goes to the early morning prayer meeting. Quite a while later, she told me that she went to the dorm and told her roommate, I think I found someone I could be happy with for the rest of my life. So we became an item, and the relationship developed. It was both social and spiritual. I was editor of the yearbook that year, and we'd come down. I was very busy, and we came down to just weeks before, months, I should say, before graduation. And this has to be settled. You, you can't just think it's going pretty well and we'll see how it turns out. 
So the two of us sat together in Elder Mosley's homiletics classroom. We had met there several times before reading Desire of Ages together. And now we're there for a different reason, at least I was. I remembered that many ministers' daughters didn't want to marry ministers for some reason. And I brought this up. And I told her, you know that I love you, and I know that you love me. But we've got to settle this, because if ministry is a problem, I have to tell you today I have no options. I cannot choose something else. It's not a choice anyhow, it's a calling. She never changed her pleasant expression. She looked at me and said, Charles, my mother is married to the dearest person on earth to me, my father, and he's a minister. I have three uncles, and they are ministers and administrators in the church. Both of my brothers are studying ministry. I've always wanted to be the wife of a minister. That was February 3rd, 1951. We call that our other anniversary, and we actually exchanged cards on that particular day. I graduated and left her there, and for one year, the hardest year of my life, I was in ministry by myself. She was in college. We kept up constant communication, too poor to make phone calls very much, so we wrote to each other, and I mean every day, every day. And we made it through one year. But the next year, I just didn't see how I could do it. She didn't either. So we decided to talk to her parents. Her father, one of the finest men I've ever met. Her mother, just a, an angel. But I didn't want to talk to them together. I wanted to talk to him alone. So we got to his house, went into his room, and I followed him with a knock at the door, and I told him. I had a great speech, but I forgot it. But somehow he got the point. And he said these words to me that have been precious ever since. He said, son, I've expected this. But before I even give you an answer, I want to tell you something. The public has known that you're name was associated with my daughters. And I want to tell you I appreciate the way you've carried yourself as a single man in the ministry. Wow. I didn't even know he thought those thoughts, but he said it. Mother then came in because her daughter was giggling so, and she wanted to know what's going on. And I didn't have to say a word. Dad said, these birds want to get married. Mother said, oh, Charles, we love you, but just one more year. And I thought, how shall I answer? But he answered. He said, they can get, they can get married, and she can finish school. I made a vow that if I stayed well, she would, and she did, going far beyond her second graduate degree. God chose my wife for me. We have both been aware of that since the beginning and it's been the greatest journey on earth.